what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? It's often said that you resemble who you assemble, meaning that whoever you're close to, whoever you kick it with, whoever you associate with, hang around them long enough and you're going to take on their character traits or they're going to take on yours. Here are 11 people close to Donald Trump that proves 100% that he is a white supremacist. Steve Bannon, although he no longer works for Trump, the executive chairman of Breitbart News helped run Trump's campaign and served as a senior White House advisor. Bannon once proudly described Breitbart as the platform for the alt-right. And under his leadership, the site published an infamous article that celebrated the work of several white supremacists, including Richard Spencer, who was one of the leaders of the Charlottesville riot, who made headlines for using Nazi slogans and gestures at the Washington celebration of Trump's inauguration. Breitbart also famously posted some of his stories under the heading Black Crime. Bannon has repeatedly and publicly endorsed the Camp of the Saints, a novel popular in white pride circles in which black Americans, dirty Arabs, and feces-eating Hindu rapists destroy civilization. The book refers to black individuals as niggas and rats. Bannon has also reportedly praised a far-right French writer named Charles Marsh, who was sentenced to life in prison after World War II for collaboration with Nazi occupiers. And he's complained publicly that too many tech CEOs are Asian American. And he reportedly told his ex-wife that he didn't want their children attending schools with significant Jewish enrollment. Mayo Yiannopoulos, the Nazi fetishizing former Breitbart staffer who co-wrote the white supremacist article described above, can thank Bannon, who has called his work valuable for launching his career. Trump's first national security advisor, Michael Flynn, called Yiannopoulos brave and said he was a phenomenal individual in November 2016. In February of this year, Trump himself tweeted a threat to revoke the University of California at Berkeley's federal funding because it canceled Yiannopoulos' appearance on campus. Yiannopoulos subsequently resigned from Breitbart during a furor over approving remarks he made in 2016 about pedophilia. But it appears that his career is still being funded by Robert Mercer, a right-wing billionaire whose daughter Rebecca served on Trump's transition team. Buckle your seatbelt, folks, it gets worse. Jeff Sessions, Trump's attorney general, originally had the political profile of a white reactionary Alabama politician in the old South mode. The Senate rejected his bid for a federal judgeship in 1986 over a series of racist remarks he'd made, some of which he confirmed. Sessions called the NAACP un-American and accused it of forcing civil rights down the throats of people. And he allegedly called a black lawyer boy and warned him to be careful how he addressed white people. Despite his rejection by the Senate, Sessions won election in the state, and his racial repertoire has since expanded beyond the traditional Deep South mode. He has enthusiastically embraced arts restrictionist stances on immigration. He objected to the National Endowment for the Humanities distributing books about Islam to public libraries. He is obsessed with a shadowy globalist media business conspiracy in general and the role of George Soros in particular. Mike Pompeo, Trump's pick for CIA director, is a Tea Party Republican supported by the Koch brothers. In 2013, Pompeo called all Muslim leaders complicit in the Boston Marathon bombing. Sebastian Gorka, ostensibly a counterterrorism advisor, but no longer a White House employee, Gorka's job consisted entirely of making grandiose and factually erroneous declarations during Fox News appearances, and he is reportedly a member of a far-right Hungarian group 
that collaborated with Nazis during World War II. He denies it, of course. Julie Kirshner, previously the executive director of the Federation for American Immigration Reform, Kirshner was appointed to work at the Federal Office of Citizenship and Immigration Services by the Trump administration in May. The Federation for American Immigration Reform's founder and its current president are both interested in eugenics and crank race signs. Both have complained that immigration undermines whites' dominance. Ben Carson, the most confusing group of racists are black white supremacists. Black white supremacists are black people who think white people are better than them and serve as lap dogs to maintain and push the white supremacy power structure. When Donald Trump was criticized for blaming both sides equally, white supremacists and demonstrators protesting their presence in a riot that broke out in Charlottesville, Virginia, Uncle Ben's cabin called the criticism of Trump's Charlottesville response, little squabbles being blown out of proportion. Dan Scavino, Trump's director of social media, is essentially a White House liaison to internet extremists. He started his career as Donald Trump's caddy and yes man back in 1990. He rose through the ranks over the past decades and has been cuddled up with Donald Trump ever since. When it came time for Donald Trump to run for president, all of that ass kissing finally paid off and Scavino was awarded the job of social media man. You can thank Scavino for the many racist dog whistling posts that have been posted on Donald Trump's Twitter account, including the infamous star of David on money and Hillary Clinton. Hey man, it's worked out real well for Donald Trump. His supporters know that he's a racist because they're racist. And Donald Trump has little deniability with excuses like, it's a star of David. Sheriff Apio, the bigoted and racist sheriff in Arizona who was found guilty and convicted of racial profiling. Stephen Miller, the White House senior policy advisor and known bully to immigrant students complained about the school celebration of Cinco de Mayo and criticized the visit by a Muslim leader. Donald Trump Jr. This fool has retweeted prominent white supremacists and conducted an interview with a white supremacist radio host who said that interracial relationships constitute white genocide. Trump Sr., for his part, famously retweeted a Twitter user named White Genocide and posted an anti-Semitic Hillary Clinton meme created by a Twitter user whose other work involved grotesque caricatures of black and Jewish individuals. I guess the white supremacists don't fall far from his daddy's nutsack. These people all have personas of Lucifer. They are evil. They are wicked. Their values reflect many people who share their backgrounds, who look like them. Their hatred for Jews, Blacks, Latinos, Asians, Muslims is staggering, even though some of them can pull off being decent people. Some of them can pull off being endearing people. They are very dangerous. They're not the ones who wear the hoods. They're not wearing white sheets and burning crosses. They're in the boardrooms making decisions that impact people's lives every day. They're in the clergy at the top with access and control over information that young people get. They're politicians who are pushing public policy. And they won't come straight out and tell you that they hate you. Most of them won't. They'll say they're for the state of Texas. They're representing the state of California. They're representing the city of Denver. The city of Chicago. But really, their agenda is to push white supremacy. If America thinks that 
this type of attitude, this mentality, where some people get to have privileges and special rights while others are denied, if they think that's the future of Western civilization, with America being the leader of democratic values, they're out of their fucking minds. The world is watching and they're not fooled. No matter what CNN says, Fox News says, people are hip to the propaganda. That's why no matter what y'all say or what you do, you'll never, ever, ever get me to believe that Donald Trump is a decent human being. You'll never get me to believe that he's smart. You'll never get me to believe that he is qualified to be a president. Maybe for you, but not in a million years. Throw a million on top of it. Would Donald Trump be my president? No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah. Florida, Texas.